All right, methods. This is going to be the first video out of three because we're splitting it into methods, method parameters, and method overloading. Right, so let's start off simple. Let's just explain what a method is. A method is a block of code which only runs when it's called, also known as invoked. You can pass data, known as parameters, into a method. Don't worry if there are things I'm saying that you don't understand. By the end of these videos, trust me, you will. Methods are used to perform certain actions, and they're also known as functions. So why use methods? Simple, to reuse code. We're defining code once, and then we can use it as many times as we want. You're going to see why this is so nice. Now, looking at the project that we've been working on for the past five or so videos, we can say that we already have a function. This is the main entry function. Now you're probably super confused about the static modifier, the void return type. This is just a name and then all this mumbo jumbo in here. This is what's called a parameter. Now let's try breaking it down. So once you get back to this video, it's going to make more sense. It might not make sense straight away. And I know a lot of people say that, but once we start actually creating the methods, it's going to make more sense. Now, the first thing that we see is a static modifier keyword. That keyword is actually out of the scope of this tutorial, but we will be going down it later down the line once we start covering classes. As for now, every method that you create in this project, make sure to make them static. If this method is static and you want to use something inside the method, it has to be static too. We'll cover that in just a sec. The second keyword is void, which is the return type. This method isn't going to return anything. Again, this is something that you're going to understand once we start building our first method. The third thing that you're seeing is the name of the function, also known as method. And this stuff inside the parentheses are parameters. Now we're going to cover that in the next video. So to actually create a function, you want to type out static, the return type void, and then the name my function or whatever you want to name it, followed by a code block, which is curly brackets. And that's how easy it is to create a function. Now, what is this function going to do? This is going to write out hello world. That's it. Write out hello world. Usually you type this above the method. Write out hello world. And how do we write something out to the console? Yeah, console write line. Hello world. Now what's fun is write line is actually a method. So you've been using methods quite a lot throughout these episodes without even knowing it. Now, if we just run the application, nothing's going to happen. Because what executes is this function right here, the main entry point. And if we hover over it, we can see that method my function is never used. That's because we're never actually calling it or invoking it. So if we call it here inside the main function, my function, and then we start it, we can see that it says hello world. So if I were to put a breakpoint up here, click F5, we can see that when we start the application, this is where the program enters, hence entry point. If I click F11, it goes to the end of the entry point and then we're done. That's why we need to call the function inside here. Let's try doing that again. If I step through, it now hits our function. It goes into the function, does what it needs to do, exits the function and continues executing to where it left off, which is inside the main function. Then it goes to the end because there is no more code to execute and that's it. Now the return type void, we're telling this function that we don't want to return anything. Remember how console.readLine, we like we can call it just like this, but then we're not making any use of it. And the reason to why we need to type console prior to that is because this function resides within the console class. Again, out of the scope of this tutorial, but we'll get to that. So the point I'm trying to make is readLine returns a string, the string that we enter to the console. So let's remove that and demonstrate this real quick. So if I were to click F5, type something in and click enter, what happens is that text gets thrown to readLine and readLine is going to pass it back to the variable that we're trying to store it in. Now we haven't declared a variable, so we're not storing it. If we do this string, my name equals and then console readLine. Just going to put a breakpoint here. I type bunny, click enter. We can see that my name now holds the value of bunny. The reason to why that is, is because the return type type that the, what we're actually returning is of type string. When we say static void rather than static string, that means we don't expect the function to return anything because not all functions are going to return anything. So let's actually create a function that returns void and a function that returns a string. 
So this function right here, static, void, greet, user, we've been through this. Let's call that real quick. If I were to click F5, we can see that it says hello world. Let's do static string. Yeah. We're going to call this print name and see how this wants to throw in a, an error. Program print name, not all code paths return a value. Now, since we specified string, the compiler is telling us that, hey, this method needs to return a string. This doesn't have to return anything. Returns void, nothing. However, this function needs to return a string. In order to return something, we use the return keyword. And then again, we want to return a string. So simple, we just type a string. And then we call it the exact same way, print name. Right, so let's remove this one right here. You can either remove it or comment it out. Now it's not being used. Now it's being ignored by the compiler. So if I were to print name, what do you think is going to happen? Nothing. You might be super confused or you may not be, but I'm going to explain why. So print name, if we hover over it, we can see that it returns a string and we're not assigning that to any variable. We could do string my name equals print name because print name does what, right? It returns a string, in this case, bunny. If I put a breakpoint here, we can see that my name is now equal to bunny and we can now console write line my name if we look at it it prints out bunny now even though this is totally valid there's nothing wrong with doing it this way what you could do is you could actually take this print name remove that and switch out that for print name because print name returns a string console write line takes a string so they go hand in hand we can see that that does exactly the same all right, that should cover the, the very basics of methods. And as the lectures go on, we're going to dive deeper into all of these things. We're actually going to start building projects and whatnot. So don't worry if you don't get it straight away. I would highly recommend that you try creating your own methods to actually, you know, to get it to click. Right, so the next lecture is going to be method parameters. It would make sense to actually know methods before heading into that episode. So make sure to brush up on your method skills and I'll see you then.